Heavenly Father, we want to appreciate you for your goodness, your mercies, your grace, your favor, your compassion, the things you have done for us. We are grateful, Lord. You have been really good to us. Lord, we can look at our lives and know that what we think is a prayer point is somebody else's answered prayer. Even the things we are dissatisfied with, they are answered prayer to other people. The things you have blessed us with, oh God, are so good great and marvelous. Some people are praying to be where we are right now. Even what we complain about is what other people are wishing for. So father, we just want to say thank you. We want to return the glory to you, Lord. We want to thank you for being gracious to us. We want to thank you for being faithful. Thank you, almighty God, that we even have a God to pray to, that we even have a father to petition that when we need something, Lord, we can come to you. We can come boldly to the throne of grace and mercy, and we are able to get the help that we need. We want to say thank you, Lord. You have done us well. You have done us well, Lord. You have done us well. And we say thank you. We are grateful, Almighty Father. We are grateful. We appreciate you, oh God. We appreciate you. Oh, we appreciate you. We appreciate you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. If we read from verse 14, I am reading the easy read version of the Bible. It says, We have a great high priest who has gone to live with God in heaven. He is Jesus, the son of God. So let us continue to express our faith in him. Jesus, our high priest, is able to understand our weaknesses. When Jesus lived on earth, he was tempted in every way. He was tempted in the same ways we are tempted, but he never sinned. With Jesus as our high priest, We can feel free to come before God's throne where there is grace. There we receive mercy and kindness to help us when we need it. Hallelujah. Jesus, our high priest, the one we are going through to access the father. He understands. King James says he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. This easy read version says he is able to understand our weaknesses. Other human beings might get tired of you and your weakness, but Jesus understands. So let's go to him tonight. He says with Jesus as our high priest, we can feel free to come before God's throne where there is grace. Tonight, let's begin to approach that throne and say, Heavenly Father, I come boldly to your throne of grace and mercy to receive your mercy, to receive your kindness, to receive your grace. Because Lord, wherever I have a weakness, I know Lord that your mercy is able to touch that weakness. You're able to help me. You're able to touch me in that very place, Lord, where I look like I don't know what I'm doing. Where I look like Satan might have a doorway. Lord, you are able to help me even in this place. So tonight uh, I am coming with boldness. I am coming with trust uh, that God is able to help me. I am not alone. I am not alone. But the Messiah is with me. The merciful God is with me. Jesus, my high priest is with me. He understands uh, my weaknesses. Uh, He understands my failures. Uh, He knows what I'm going through. So I come boldly and I ask for mercy, Lord. Lord, every weakness that I have, every failure, Lord, I receive mercy. I receive the blood of Jesus. I receive cleansing by the blood of Jesus in Jesus mighty name. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Brethren, if you can see your screens there, I've put for us first John from verses seven to ten. The Bible says, but if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us from all sin. It says, if we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. 
But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and we know he's not. And we are showing that his word has no place in our hearts. We know that the word of God has a place in our hearts. Let's go ahead and begin to confess. Heavenly Father, any way that I've come short of your glory, every sin, every transgression, every iniquity of my bloodlines, oh God, I confess it tonight as sin and I repent of it and I receive your mercy. I receive your cleansing. You said if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So Lord, tonight I receive cleansing from all unrighteousness. Let every unrighteousness be washed from me in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We bless you tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then verse 7 says, if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. If we are living in the light, let's begin to ask that the light of God, let it shine all around us, shine through us, in us, around us. For Jesus is the light of the world. And he says, it's the light who shines in darkness and darkness could not comprehend it. Lord, let your light shine. Let your light shine in my vicinity, in my postcode, Lord, in my community, where I live, in my town, in my city. Let the light of God shine. Lord, we want to live in the light. Let your light shine. Let your light expose all the works of the enemy and destroy them in the name of Jesus. Let your light shine. Oh God, let your glorious light shine. Let the light shine. Let the light shine. Let the light dispel every darkness. Let the light chase away every darkness. Let your light shine. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Acts chapter nine. The Bible talks there about the account of Saul that day he had the Damascus experience. The Bible says in Acts 9 verse 3, as he journeyed, he came near to Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. That light was the glory of the Lord Jesus. And when that light shined, there was no option but for Saul to fall to the ground. He just fell prostrate and he began to worship because when the Lord said, so, so, why are you persecuting me? Nobody needed to give him an introduction to the Lord Jesus to say, well, Jesus is talking to you. He instinctively knew it. He said, who are you, Lord? He knew it was the Lord speaking. Let us ask God, Father, in our families, in our homes, in our communities, in our cities, in our nations. May your light, the glory of your light shine so that men and women will have an encounter with your presence. My neighbors will know you. My street will know you. My community will know you. The people around us will know you. Those who've not given their lives to Christ, they will know you. Lord, let your light shine. Just like the day you shined, oh Lord, on Apostle Saul. And Lord, he had an encounter. He was immediately transformed. He knew where the light was coming from. He was not confused. He didn't need an introduction. He said, who are you, Lord? He knew he was talking to the Lord. Lord, let your light shine in my neighborhood, wherever I am. Lord, light shine to my, my family members, anybody in my bloodlines who has not given their lives to Christ. Lord, let your light shine. Anybody connected to me by birth, by marriage, Lord, by covenant friendships. Lord, let your light shine. Jehovah, reveal yourself to them. In the mighty name of Jesus, Saul knew that it was your presence. Lord, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your light shine, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Still in Acts chapter 9, when the Lord sent um, Ananias to Saul, to go and heal him of the blindness that had come to him. The Bible says when he prayed for him and he said immediately, there fell from Saul's eyes as it were scales and he received his sight and arose and was baptized in the Holy Ghost. I want us to pray. Is there any one of us who has any veil, any scale? That is stopping you from seeing a higher dimension of God's glory. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.18, But we all, 
with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image as by the spirit of the Lord from glory to glory. You know, as a child of God, every day I must be growing in his glory. I must be increasing from glory to glory. Is there any scale, any veil that is hindering my next level of glory? Is stopping me from receiving that revelation? Let's begin to ask God, same as what happened to Saul. Let the veils and the scales fall from our eyes. Anything that has be, has caused the word of God to be hidden from us, let the veils and the scales, let them fall from our eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. Every hindrance, uh, anything that is veiling the truth, uh, anything veiling the truth uh, that is stopping me from moving to the next level of glory. Lord, anything stopping my brothers and sisters in Christ uh, on this prayer line from moving to the next level. I am asking in the name of Jesus, let the veil and the scales be broken. Let the veils and the scales fall off in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, we receive revelation. Let every hindrance be torn off. Let Holy Ghost fire consume the veils. Let the scales fall off in the name of Jesus. In Jesus matchless name we pray. Amen. Verse 22 of Acts chapter 9. The Bible says, But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that Jesus was the Christ. He says he increased the more, you know, more and more every day. He was getting more and more stronger. No wonder God used him to write one third of the New Testament. Let us ask God, Lord, increase my spiritual strength. Let me increase more and more. Your son, Apostle Paul, he increased in strength. You say he increased in strength more and more. Lord, I am asking in Jesus name, increase my spiritual strength. Increase me, Lord. May I not remain the same. By the time we end this period of waiting upon you, almighty Jehovah, we are asking for increase in strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, may we increase the more in Jesus mighty name. Thank you, Father. Increase in strength. In Jesus matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 And then after this, when Saul was increasing in strength, obviously the Jews were very wound up about him. And the Bible says they tried to kill him. But the disciples, in verse 25 of Acts 9, the disciples took him by night and they let him down by the wall in a basket. Some people were holding the rope and letting the basket down. And it was because of these rope holders, these basket holders, that Apostle Paul could finish the assignment God had for him. We all need these type of people. We need the rope holders. When people are trying to kill you, they rise up in the night and start praying for you. When Satan comes against you, the church gathers around you and says, no, I want us to pray. That even in this period of fasting, may God empower all of us in the body of Christ. It doesn't matter which local parish you worship in. We are all the body. May God knit us together with the chains of unity. Bind us together with the ropes of unity so that each of us becomes a rope holder to the other. When there's a believer who is down, you don't gossip about them and rejoice in their problem, but you stand up and pray for them. The rope holders, the basket holders are the reason why Paul could write Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians. He could write Romans because they didn't allow him to be killed. They didn't allow his assignment to be sabotaged. Tonight, child of God, would you be that rope holder? For your neighbor, for your brother, for your sister. Lift up your voice and pray. Every child of God who is facing any kind of satanic attack. I join my faith with them and I stand as a rope holder. I put them in that basket of the power of God. And Lord, I pray, let them escape. Let them escape. Let them escape. Whatever the trap that Satan has for them, let them escape. 
Maria Cantele Balagada, Maroko Coco Bologodo. Lord, I pray, Jehovah God, let my brother, my sister in Christ, let them escape. Whatever is the plan of God, of God for them, it must come to pass. The enemy must not truncate their destiny. Lord, we are praying on this altar. We have apostles here. We have prophets here. We have evangelists here. We have teachers here. We have pastors here. We have the fivefold ministry here. Every one of them, Lord, they need divine rescue. Lord, Lord, rescue them. Lord, rescue them. Do not allow any of your children to be overwhelmed by Satan and his attacks. In the mighty name of Jesus, we join our faith together and we stand, oh God, and say, let there be deliverance. Let there be deliverance. Let there be deliverance. May God deliver his children. We want to be those rope holders. We want to be those rope holders. We want to be those rope holders. We want to hold the rope. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Yes, Lord, from tonight, we are asking for divine rescue for every child of God that is under attack from any dimension, from any sphere. Lord, deliver them. Deliver them in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We want to continue and go forward. You know, sometimes I discovered that what is the problem um, that is facing us believers is that we are not canceling enough the negative pronouncements. You know, whereas the kingdom of darkness is continually cursing, continually. They don't take a day off from cursing. If you hear the testimonies of people who gave their lives to Christ after having been in the occult. They will all tell you that if you're in the occult, every day you're releasing curses. Every day they're cursing. Morning and night, they're cursing. While you are sleeping, they're cursing. That's why we must not be tired of breaking their curse, of undoing their curse. We prayed it again this morning. We are repeating it again. Isaiah 54 verse 17. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against us in judgment, we condemn it. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Our righteousness is from God. Therefore, tonight, every word curse, we cancel it. Whoever is sitting, speaking evil against us, pronouncing evil over our children, the children who went to school, is there any teacher who pronounced evil over them? We cancel it by the blood of Jesus. When you went to work today, are there people who cursed you at work, who are speaking against you at work? We cancel the curses. Every place where our names have been mentioned for evil, we cancel it. We cancel it. Wherever we have been named for evil, whoever is declaring evil over any one of us, all the families we represent, somebody looked at your beautiful child and said they will amount to nothing. Somebody looked at your well-behaved child and said, hmm, one day they are going to be disobedient. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. Every word cursed, anything that they've spoken that is not in agreement with the word of God, we nullify it in the name of Jesus. Father, we overturn. We overturn the curses. We overturn. We are the blessed of the Lord. We are the blessed of the Lord. Curses cannot stand against us. Curses cannot stand. They look at the body of Christ and they say that church will soon close. We cancel it by the blood of Jesus. We scatter the counsel of the wicked ones. It is not our portion. We refuse their curses. In the name of Jesus, we release a blessing upon all of us. And all our families, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Rabba Baba Baba Sekendele Barabo Shaya, Jean Bragado Sobrege de Leba, Rebo Bobo Bobo Sekanda, Rebo Bobo Setendele Baya. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. You will receive power. Dunamis. Once again tonight, let's receive it. In this place of corporate prayer, Lord, I receive power. 
Because the one who is powerful is not worried about the battle because they know they are winning. Lord, we receive power. We receive power once again so that we can witness for you, O oh God. We receive divine enablement. Once again, we receive power. There cannot be a powerless Christian. There cannot be a powerless Christian. We receive power in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said to them in Luke 10, 18 to 19, he says, I saw Satan falling like lightning from heaven. Where was he going as he was falling from heaven? Where was he going? He was coming here to become a problem on earth. But Jesus said, don't worry. Behold, I have given you power and authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. I am giving you the physical and the mental strength and ability to, to overpower the enemy. Nothing shall in any way harm you. I want you to remind the serpents and the scorpions, whichever ones are coming against you, the serpents, the, you know, the serpents re represent the occult, witchcraft, sorcery, oh, incantations, all these things. And the scorpions represent affliction, the things that bring you pain, they cause you pain, they really hurt you, they break your heart. You have power over them. Begin to trample them. Those scorpions that are trying to bring you pain, they try to bring affliction, they want you to be crying every day, not tears of joy, but affliction. We refuse it. We trample them. We trample them. We trample Lord, uh, every serpent, uh, every scorpion. Uh, they are under our feet uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, every occultic power, everything that the snake, uh, the serpent is bringing our way, we trample upon them. In Namaste, Kelegado Sabrada, Ragado Sopregadeleba, Rinda Luba Luba Sukada, Rabobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobob
Those who have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Lord, we receive a touch for them. Let the fire angels touch them. Let them receive the promise of the Father. Tonight, they will dream dreams. They will see visions. They will be speaking in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we receive angelic messengers. We receive angelic messengers. We receive them right now. Helema so kondoro boshaya. Ikadula maragada sende. Regado so kondoro bosia. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In the book of Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Verse 26. The Bible says about Philip. That the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying. Arise and go toward the south. In the way that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is a desert, the angel told him. And when he went, the Bible says he was able to meet the Ethiopian eunuch and preach the gospel. Angels can give us divine instructions on behalf of God. It's not just that you need a prophet. Sometimes you need an angel to come and speak to you directly. I want you to receive the angels that have prophetic instructions for you. Begin to receive them and say, Lord, I receive just like you did for Philip. You're not a partial God. You are a God who has sent them out. You send the angels. Are they not ministering spirits who have been sent to minister to the heirs of salvation? Right now, Lord, let the angels who bring prophetic instructions, let them be released, oh God, all over this prayer line. Let every man, every woman, every young person receive their own visitation in the name of Jesus. Let Kasson Angels are attracted to an atmosphere of faith. Have faith in God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy to be lifted on high. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. When Apostle Paul was on that ship that was getting into trouble in the high seas, where they are not even a vessel in like a cruise vessel, like what people have nowadays when, 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 when you are going for a cruise. It's a wonderful vessel. But these people were not in that kind of a vessel. You know, they were in a, a, a very rudimentary boat. And the storm came and they were, they, it looked like they're in trouble. They just cannot survive this storm. And all the people, the Bible says they gave up. They even stopped eating food. Just like some of you, when you have a problem, it's not, even when you're not fasting, you cannot eat anymore because you're so worried. These people were worried on that boat. They couldn't eat anymore. They were just there because they thought they're going to die. But listen to what Apostle Paul said to them in Acts chapter 27. He said to them, now I exhort you, I encourage you to be of good cheer. I encourage you, cheer up, be happy. He says, for there shall be no loss of any man's life here. Nobody's dying. You know, even if doctors told you that they're going to die, we want to decree today. Nobody is dying prematurely. No child is dying. No young adult is dying. You are not dying. Paul said, nobody's losing their life. He says, why did he say that? Why did he have the confidence? Nobody's dying. In verse 23, he said, for they stood by me this night, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Because I serve God and I belong to God, angels minister to me. That's what Paul was saying. And because the angel ministered to him, he he, get, he gathered up courage. Child of God, I can assure you right now, if God opens your eyes and you see that angel beside you, you will be full of courage. You'll be full of. So now I want you to begin to receive and say, Lord, open my eyes to see the angelic ministers that you have sent to me, Lord, to strengthen me. Angels went to give Paul courage. He did not become afraid because he had had an angelic visitation that strengthened him and encouraged him. Lord, tonight, uh, let your children have that encounter that they'll be encouraged. Uh, they'll be energized. Uh, they will no longer be afraid. Uh, Satan will not, will not be chasing them up and down. Uh, but they will see that our God is powerful. Our God is almighty. And he walks in the realms of the supernatural. 
He walks in the realms of the supernatural. In the mighty name of Jesus, our God is able. He did it for Paul. He did it for the people in the days of the Bible. He will do it for you. Our God is able to give you a new revelation tonight. To show you a new dimension. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. When we go back to that Daniel, we see that the angel spoke. That the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me for 21 days. At this point, Daniel is living in Persia. There is a king of Persia. But in the realm of the spirit, there is a wicked prince, a principality who is ruling over Persia. And that principality was refusing the angels access to enter the airspace of Persia. He was busy fighting them. Until, you know, the archangel Michael had to come and help angel Gabriel. And it was the, the archangel Michael's reinforcement that enabled Gabriel to break forth and reach Daniel. How do we know that there isn't a wicked prince of Nigeria who is watching over your prayer? How do we know there's not a wicked prince of Zimbabwe watching over your prayer? A wicked prince of England, of the United Kingdom that is trying to resist your angels from entering the airspace. I want you to begin to pray. Let the power of God burst out every satanic hindrance, anything contending with my angelic visitation in the realms of the spirit. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Let the battle turn to the favor of the angels assigned to me in this period of prayer and fasting. Every satanic legion that has opposed my angelic messengers, I come against you in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire begin to consume those evil forces that are standing against the angels of the Lord. Anything that is contending with the angels of the Lord, trying to hinder them, trying to stop them from arriving with the blessing of the Lord, which make it rich and add no sorrow. We come against them in the name of Jesus. Wherever there is a battle in the realm of the spirit and satanic powers are contending with our angels. Oh God, release your fire. Release your fire. Release your fire. Harema se tendeleba. Zimbragadolo baraba shanda. Regado so bregade. Rena nene nemo si anderebo. Rado do bredo se kendeleba. Robo bobo bo su bredede. Rada da da bazegede. Rina nina masin talaba. Let the airways be open. Let the airways be open. We open up the portals for the angels of God to be able to reach the planet Earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Erebo bobo son tolo boyanda. Every wicked prince. Every principality ruling over this domain, we come against you in the name of Jesus and we command you, move, shift in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Bible told us in the book of Ephesians that God has raised us up together with Christ. That we are seated together in Christ. In heavenly places. We are above all principality and power. But you know sometimes as human beings. When we are praying. You feel as if you are praying from down here. And you know trying to go past enemy territory. But the Bible is telling us. In that Ephesians 2 verse 6. That God has raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. So I want you to begin to decree, declare and say, I take my positional authority in Christ Jesus, my Messiah. I ascend into the heavenly places by faith in the finished work of the cross, by faith in the blood of Jesus. I ascend to my rightful position as I stand in Christ Jesus in heavenly places, far above all principality and power. I bind every evil prince, every ruling spirit working against our lives in the name of Jesus from the position of being in Christ uh, in heavenly places uh, far above evil domains. Uh, I take my position uh, and I bind the evil princes. Uh, I bind the evil rulers. Uh, whoever is the strong man uh, over my city, over my region, over my town. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I bind you. I am hidden in the cleft of the rock. Uh, as I'm seated in the cleft of the rock, uh, as I'm seated in Christ Jesus, uh, I bind every strong man uh, in my family, in my bloodline, in the name of the Lord of hosts. 
hosts, in the name of the Lord of hosts, in the name of the Lord, who is the commander of the angel armies, I command you fall, fall in the name of Jesus, let those evil ruling spirits fall, let their strong men fall, let their chief demon fall, let them fall in the name of Jesus, for whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven, whatever we lose on earth is loosed in heaven, in our position in Christ Jesus, we lose ourselves from the works of darkness, we lose ourselves from satanic invasion, we lose ourselves in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Christ Jesus, we are secure. We are hidden in the cleft of the rock. No backlash can come against us. No backlash can come against our families, against our children, against anyone connected to us. For we are hidden in the cleft of the rock. In Christ Jesus, we stand. We decree everything in Christ Jesus. We pronounce everything in Christ Jesus. Whatever we are declaring, we declare it in Christ Jesus. We go through the priesthood of Jesus. Our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Our declarations are not naked, but they are covered by the blood of Jesus and by the garment of the priesthood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. I wonder, as we round off before I hand over to Pastor Kingsley, to begin to ask God. The Bible says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth you know will make you free. You're going to declare, you know, Hosea 4, 6, my people, not sinners, not the world, but the people of God, the people who are born again, Holy Ghost baptized, full of the Holy Ghost, full of power. He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They perish when they don't have to perish because they don't understand who they are. They don't understand that the, they have the power. I want you to pray and say from tonight, I refuse to perish because of lack of knowledge. I refuse it. I refuse to perish. I, I refuse. Lord, every area. I receive the truth that sets me free in my finances, in my health, in my family, as a mother, as a wife, as a spouse, oh Lord, as a, as a professional, Lord, as a minister of God, in every way, I receive the truth that I, I need to know. I refuse to perish because of ignorance in the name of Jesus. None of us will perish. We receive wisdom. We receive understanding. We receive revelation. We are not going to perish in the mighty name of Jesus. None of us will perish. Our children will not perish. Our churches will not perish. The body of Christ will not perish in the mighty name of Jesus. From today on us, we are walking in power. We working miracles. We live a life of favor because we know who we are. We will not perish in the name of Jesus. We are the chosen generation called for to show your excellence, Lord. All I require for life, God has given me. I know whose I am. I know who I am. I refuse to perish. I refuse to be limited. I refuse to be restricted in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' much less name we pray. Ah, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name.